It's been described as a blow to Western conspiracies against Lebanon's Hezbollah movement and the Syrian government. A UN-backed tribunal has found no link between a 2005 blast in Beirut that killed Lebanon's former Prime Minister Rafik Hariri and the Hezbollah resistance movement leader or the Syrian government. The verdict was announced on Tuesday after 15 years of investigation and spending some $1 billion to prove allegations of association between the explosion and the Lebanese resistance movement or Damascus. But the tribunal did not stop short of echoing those who have been trying to make the unfounded allegations against the resistance group and Damascus. The trial chamber is of the view that Syria and Hezbollah may have had motives to eliminate Mr. Hariri and his political allies. Yet the court found no evidence against the Hezbollah leader or Syria. There was no evidence that the Hezbollah leadership had any involvement in Mr. Hariri's murder and there is no direct evidence of Syrian involvement in it. The court instead found a member of the Lebanese group Hezbollah guilty of assassinating former Prime Minister Rafik Hariri in a massive bomb blast in 2005. The three other Hezbollah suspects were cleared of their charges. It's believed the latter part of the verdict shows that the countries that forced the United Nations Security Council into forming the tribunal in the first place were still influencing the verdicts that it issues. But I believe that the tribunal came out with a, with a result that is satisfying. We accept it. The court was based on unproven hypotheses without any legal basis and in violation of Lebanon's sovereignty. Hezbollah leader Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah has said the group will maintain the innocence of four suspects regardless of outcome and will not even hold the tribunal or the court legitimate. The verdict means nothing to Hezbollah and any statement issued by the judges is of no value. Despite all their best efforts for the past 15 years, the imperialist powers, especially the United States and Israel, could not, despite all their efforts, pinpoint, like basically smear Hezbollah and the Syrian Arab Republic. The 2005 assassination of Lebanon's former Prime Minister Rafik Hariri plunged Lebanon into what was then its worst crisis since the 1975 to 1990 civil war. It set the stage for years of confrontation between rival political factions in Lebanon. Hezbollah had denied any link to or interest in the atrocity. When you look at the different forms of evidence that have been presented, in 2010, Hezbollah presented leaked footage from uh, Israeli espionage satellites that they claim that uh, Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah claims contains uh, evidence that Israel was behind the assassination and this this evidence wasn't even really considered in any of these court cases that we have seen taking place in The Hague. The group has rejected the jurisdiction and independence of the court. Following the assassination, pressure increased on Syria to withdraw its troops from Lebanon. The assassination was also used to pressure Hezbollah movement to disarm. Many believe the incident served Israel's interests in Lebanon. Yet Israel's possible motives or its involvement wasn't even included in the investigation. And of course, when you look at this assassination, the age-old question, qui bono, who benefits? is something that needs to be asked and the only people who have benefited from the assassination of Rafiq Hariri are uh, the West, the United States and Israel because due to the assassination of Hariri and due to the fact that this was immediately blamed on Syria and on Hezbollah, we had the so-called Cedar Revolution, we had the forced withdrawal of uh, Syrian forces from Lebanon in 2005. The verdict has come at a critical moment in Lebanon's modern history. On 4th of August, 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate stored in the Beirut port blew up, obliterating the city's main commercial hub and damaging buildings across a wide swath. The cause of the blast, the most destructive in the country's troubled history, is still unclear and a probe is looking into whether it was caused by neglect, an accident or external interference.
Western-backed groups accused Hezbollah of storing weapons in Beirut port. Hezbollah has denied the allegation and has said the port is not connected in any shape or form to Hezbollah. Lebanon's government subsequently stepped down as Prime Minister Hassan Diab blamed endemic corruption for the catastrophe. It's believed Western countries are trying to use the incident to put pressure on Lebanon to change its political landscape.